There's so much footage of just these nails blinging in this video. Just be warned, it's a 42 minute video and like 40 minutes is just showing you how blingy they are. <laughs> hello everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video you guys i'm gonna show you guys how i achieved this set oh my goodness i i envisioned this set um i wanted to do it so bad um anybody who's happened to be a client is listening probably see i had it a little plant swatch over here. I'm just excited to show you guys how I did this. And I think it came out so great. Better than what I envisioned in my mind. So this is how my client showed up. It was a one-time appointment. I believe it was for her birthday. So she was getting her nails done elsewhere, I believe. And um, so she has some rings and a little damage. They're not, they're not the worst by any means. They felt sturdy, nice, and could handle. They just had... A little bit. I think she popped off her previous set as well, which you should not do, but it gets the best of us sometimes. Even me, I probably mostly only pop my sets off, but do, I said, do better than me. Don't be like me, be better than me. And as a professional, I can't ever tell you to pop your nails off. So I use the skinny, itty bitty, skinny, itty bitty, skinny. Yeah, that bit <laughs> from like elegance to remove the cuticle from the nail plate to kind of get in um those nail folds on the sidewalls and then i use that buffy bit to kind of flick back that skin and buff any calloused areas and you can see now i'm clipping the dead skin and the dead skin only we're not doing this crazy clipping like a like you see the um russian-esque style manicures be done where they clip a lot of that skin back there off that's not what i'm doing Everybody has their feelings about it. You can type them down below. Y'all can argue about it in the comments. It's fine with me. It gives me more views, more interactions. So go ahead, do it. So I just did that. And then um, later on, I always go, once I clip them, I always go back in and buff again with the either round bit or that buffy bit just to buff any straight. Because we used a straight cuticle nipper to cut a rounded surface so we need to buff any inconsistencies out so i either did that after i believe i did that after i actually built the set out but it needs to be done or i didn't show the clip either way it happened so my client wanted square nails which kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop um so i'm using these square tips i don't have many on hand they're more like traditional tips with a little bit of a curve to them, which isn't my favorite thing. Of course, you can see I'm going under the nail and filing that curve off. As you can see, I'm trying to show you guys. I'm taking that file and going under the nail, filing that part that curves down. You see it? I'm just filing it off. And inherently, when that happens, it kind of narrows out the nail which is absolutely fine, especially for this look. Makes it look less of like a kind of flare duck type nail. Um, and it keeps it with a with a square nail. You really want to keep the, the shape going straight out from the sidewall, just absolutely straight. I asked the client if we could taper them in slightly. She said very, very slightly. She very said that. She, very, she made a point to let me know very slightly so i made sure i kept it very slight so basically not much more than me taking that curve out really did but i wanted to ensure that these nails didn't look any wider than they needed to be um square nails you know hey they're not my utmost favorite and that's that's kind of the irony in this whole situation not that it's crazier, the drama is not intense, is that I wanted to do this set so, so bad. And then she said square. And I was like, oh, just a shot in my chest. Oh, 
my heart. I'm like a square. <laughs> but you know, you paying me. I'll do what you want. She was open to doing the design, which I appreciated. And I still think these are absolutely beautiful square. You can see now I'm blending in the tip. What I'm doing, it looks very aggressive. It's sped up. I'm filing the actual tip. And then I'm lightly, lightly going over her natural nail and buffing it. It does not look like it. It looks very aggressive. It looks like I'm just filing her natural nail. I am not. You can, There's a level difference. That tip comes up a higher level. So when I'm filing that, like right now, I'm only filing the tip and not her natural nail until I purposefully go over her natural nail. And I'm just kind of rotating the file just to add just scuffs and inconsistencies to etch the nail and make sure we have great adhesion i don't know where it, you know her adhesion is going to be like i don't know her story so when i don't know a client's situation i like to give the best chance i can do everything possible i can to ensure they have great adhesion right now i'm just kind of further uh flushing that bit out that's probably not the best way to flushing the bit out down the toilet no <laughs> um not the bit the tip <laughs> can i talk anyways so i cleanse the nail that i'm using light elegance air bond and the tack um air bond is a um primer that activates with the moisture in the air in the nail so if she is more prone to like having like hyperhidrosis or anything of that sort having more you know tacky clammy hands this is actually going to help again one time client don't know her story just pulling out all the guns then i applied light elegance tack cured that in the light and i'm using light elegance jimmy gel and just as a base gel just to get everything a little more flush just get something going and i mentioned it before especially because she is a one-time client jimmy gel can be soaked off so having this down first ensures if the client is able to file everything else down it'll be tedious to do it with a hand file at home or at least have another nail tech do it if she goes to a regular shop they can soak off that last little bit that it is actually touching her natural nail so it's important for me for multiple reasons to do this to even it out but then actually um give that barrier so she has the easiest time taking these off now you can see this um this will fill in those inconsistencies too that are in her actual that are in her actual nail plate because she has those rings from her previous excursions so yeah um so right now what i'm doing is i am that's, I mean, pretty obvious. I drew a line down the center of the nail and I am filling one side with a gold glitter. Oh, what is this glitter? Do I show it to the camera? Um, it, it is Dreaming of Dubai. Sorry, I had it right by me as I'm doing the voiceover. And um, this part might seem tedious and unnecessary, but it is absolutely neither of those things. Um, it wasn't very hard to do this, and it was very necessary. The most necessary, if you plan on doing this or emulating this or doing this, anything similar or better, please, 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 please respect this step. And you can do it, you can do it with a gel polish if you feel. This is going to be encapsulated within the nail. It was important for me not to add any more bulk to this nail, especially once I knew she was going for a square shape that's already, we're already at the edge of looking bulky. We're doing bling. We're doing bling at the tips. That is all. That's the recipe for getting bulk going. I do not want that. So first and foremost, I need to battle that by tapering the shaping just slightly. That helps first and foremost. Second most, encapsulating what I can within the nail is going to help immensely. So I'm just taking, I believe it was the stripey brush from the Salita Ryden collection. I believe that's what it was. And I'm just taking a brush. I'm not even sure which one this is. 
but you see it's just a little gel brush and I am filling in that glitter gel making sure that line is straight it doesn't have to be the most precise thing I'm just eyeballing it and getting it as straight as possible if um this is something that was going to show then you guys know I I always say I flip the hand over with the palm facing up and that's how I usually try to make sure things are straight, even, and balanced. But I could really just visualize this because we're going to do those chains down the center of the nail. And bling is round. We have a straight line. There's just a, a lot to play with. So as long as we get this pretty much straight, if we eyeball it, look straight to you, look straight to her or your client, her, him, whatever. Anybody can get their nails done. We don't play that over here. Um... So as long as it, you know, it feels straight, we're going to go for it. So I'm taking the Light Elegance Ideal Pink Builder. I um, feel like this color would be ideal um, be um, with just with our skin tone. So I'm using this and I am making that nail bed. Essentially what I'm doing is a reverse French technique. Would you call this reverse French? y'all you guys can tell i'm not super into like traditional pink and white french terms and backfills and etc mm -mm. but you can see what i'm doing i emulated like a french situation that nail bed but just half of the nail so i use the other brush to kind of clean up my shape and like i said it looks tedious and difficult but honestly this was really easy. I was able to get through this pretty quickly because it didn't, you know, get it pretty much clean. The gel really does a lot of the work for you. Like, like I said, I just use that brush to kind of clean up that shape. And generally speaking, I'm accustomed to doing Frenches. You guys know that I draw them pretty often on the nail. So I kind of know how I like my fringes to sit. So I just did my best to do the reverse of that and make sure the I'm usually not drawing on the nail bed or building the nail bed. I'm usually doing the inverse and drawing the tip. So like I said, I just did the inverse of that. I'm putting that color, making sure it's build up, built up, making sure it's opaque enough to cover up the inconsistencies and in those rings in her nail bed and also to cover up that clear and you can see I got that shape pretty much how I wanted it and then I just cleaned that up with that other brush it's a different clean dry brush and um so I just clean that up and I usually like to you see I like to end that French usually where the uh, free edge starts at the sidewall just kind of keep everything fair game even and we can kind of determine how what's the word how narrow we want that french to be if you want it like a a wide looking u-shape more narrow looking u-shape you want a steep valley a broad valley whatever you want to do so kind of kept that in mind try to make them all look like they were sisters who liked each other and this is what we're doing so i kind of laid down a slip layer the best i could um and then I took a bigger bead and floated that where I wanted it. And you see, I'm just guiding it. And it doesn't, it's not perfect. It's, we're getting it, we're getting it looking good. And I just want to reiterate, like, this really didn't take as long as it looks like it would take. It really was pretty simple. The bling took way longer, way longer than this. We got through this pretty quickly. So I'm going to take Light Elegance Butter Bling. This is the holographic one. This is going to be the base for our Crystal AB stones on that French. And this is just a beautiful, very saturated holographic. Um, one of their butter creams that they call Butter Blings. They have a very high quality pigment in those i think light elegance has like three or four of them of the butter blings i think they're still available definitely check this out this is beautiful it was the perfect base for those stones 
And you say I'm just filling in and I'm being really considerate of making sure that French look stays intact. So I'm filling in the areas as need be and respecting that shape, making sure I have good consistency. The butter bling has very good coverage, making sure I get nice and tight in that sidewall area and just, yeah, because this is really, these are... Uh, I'll go off on my tangent right now while you see what I'm doing. This is the most important part to these nails is doing these glitter bases and getting this line straight because the crystals are rounded. They're not going to make a straight line. It's an impossibility. There's going to be gaps. So we need something that emulates the bling, but makes that straight beautiful curved line not that this is literally a straight line it's a straight line that is in a curved shape you know what i'm saying the crystals are round circles they're going to be gaps this is going to fill in the gaps this is what's going to make it look like you have a french design made with crystals i don't you see where i'm filling in right there at the sidewalls right there boom 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 that i don't have crystals even my size threes aren't small enough to fill in that area I don't what you are going to see is the bling not the bling the um the gel is going to be exposed right there it's not going to be obvious you're not going to be able to tell it's going to look like a nice sharp kind of deep french and that's because we have a coordinating glitter behind it and it's going to fill in the gaps of the crystals is going to make your mind be tricked and think like this is a beautiful full bling French from from the beginning to the end from left to the right I was about to say from the root to the two I don't know if that's appropriate um <laughs> but that's what's gonna make it look like and now I am just encapsulating everything and um with the clear cool gel from light elegance and I'm polishing on a slip layer first I don't care that layer and I'm taking a bigger, bigger bead and floating that across the nail. I'm also building my apex with this gel, getting my strength from this gel. So everything else was just designed. We're encapsulating it, getting it together. So back to the actual aesthetic of this design. One, the glitters are important, like I said, because you're bumping up circle against circle with the crystals, you're going to have gaps when you have those gaps you want something you want it to be full you don't want to have the appearance of gaps so we have something on the background that simulates the bling that the crystal has the closest thing we have to that is glitter because it's sparkly like our crystals are sparkly so it's important and i see people that do bling nails and they do full bling nails and if it's some type of look that you're going for for whatever blessed reason okay otherwise if you want that true full bling look please put a coordinating glitter behind it i know i know yes and you can try a solid color doesn't even then doesn't do the same thing but again depending on if you're going for a certain look have at it art is art but if the look you're going for is a full and rich bling look. Put a coordinating glitter behind it. Doesn't have to be a hundred percent exact match, just close enough. And sometimes you can have it a little off intentionally. To you can have like a little more of a yellow gold if your bling isn't as yellow, or vice versa. You can have a more muted gold if you know your bling is too much of a yellow look anything you know that's just an example but i would again suggest you put that glitter back there that's going to change the whole game for you um and yeah especially when you're doing bling in certain shapes like we're doing a french we're doing we're doing a french <laughs> our that's what we're doing and if we want that look to be full and for it to translate correctly we need to 
have it full and complete with something that is blingy that looks like crystals that's going to be glitter so even if you weren't doing a french let's say you were want to do a swirl or you want to do a circle or a heart shape draw it first with glitter cure it and then fill it in with as many crystals as you can never ever ever putting a crystal outside the boundary of what you drew no matter what it is, like I said, you could draw a heart shape in the middle of the nail, fill it with crystals, but don't ever go out the perimeter of the heart that you drew with the glitter. And you're going to have a bling looking heart in the center of your nail. That's just a tip trick and something you can use straight from me to you. Take that technique and use it how you will. But it's a very important, easy, it seemed logical um, but you know, some of you guys are new, some of you starting out, some of you guys are hobbyists, some of you are in school, some of you guys just want to hear me ramble on, whatever it is, I'm here to tell you. So as you can see, give me a little, I don't even know what emoji, I don't even know what emoji to give me for this, this shaping. Give me a shape, give me a triangle. <laughs> Give me a triangle emoji down below for the shaping. Give me a shape for shaping. I'll take a square too. I will not accept a circle though. <laughs> um, and you can see this is how I shape my nails. The same way that I shape my tips with the palm facing up. And the nails, of course, facing me. And I like, you can see everywhere that my file is touching when I shape. It's not just the perimeter right here. One, I file underneath to bring it straight out to make sure those side walls are nice and beautiful. And then I file the free edge. Um, of course, to get a nice, beautiful, straight shape. That doesn't apply if you're doing almond or stiletto with, you know, having that straight, flat, free edge but still nonetheless and then it also matters your third dimension matters when you're shaping nails you might think it's just the perimeter that you take in consideration like oh the shape is just the outside perimeter of the nail the very edge of those three edges left side right side top side the end of the nail the tip of the nail but it does matter how the nail is coming at you three-dimensionally because that can make it look more look more curved and crooked so can't really dive deep it's something hard you, you can just mute me rewatch it over and over again and see what i'm doing and you can see everywhere my file touches by of course where it's scuffed up at and see what I'm doing. I am considering that third dimension, what is coming at me. Of course, we want to keep our apex intact and everything, but any little lumps and bumps that may be, you know, you may have a literal straight edge, but you may have a lump and bump that in the terms of dimensions, like coming at your face from this perspective is making your nail look I can't even think of a word making it look jacked up so consider your third dimension when you're filing so now I am taking a smooth top ceramic bit and I am just refining the surface of the nails um builder gel is very easy to file it's a softer product um so even if you have a client, sometimes with gel, because it can move, and if you have a client who's not paying attention or is not accustomed to it, you may get where product runs. It's very easy to remedy with builder gel. If it was with acrylic, if that happened for whatever reason on earth, it would be very tedious to try to fix and that's the beauty of gel. It's very easy to file it's so much less stress i recently um had a client and you guys know i don't normally do it she had acrylic and i allowed her to come in and handled it and i was like oh my goodness i have not worked with acrylic in so long it was so 
weird and foreign, just how long it took to file it into shape to like finish file with like a bit like how you see me doing now and like literally shape the nail. It was so much more difficult. It was so much more difficult. I am so grateful that I figured out <laughs> Discover Gel. I don't think my wrists and hands could take it, honestly. I I recommend gel, not even for like, you guys know I, I constantly push it. You can roll your eyes, whatever. You, and don't even play me out. Yes, you can scroll back to my videos, my older videos. I built a lot of my channel on acrylic, so I'm not scared of it. It's not foreign to me nothing like that at all it's just more difficult to file like I was mentioning it on my hand it's much more stress it's much more stress for me to e-file it like I'm doing now even though it's a way to move through things quicker it's much more difficult um the smell the chemicals um the dust is different it's a it's a different, it's not as fine as a dust when you file it, generally speaking. So it's harder for the, um, like the dust extractor to pick it up. And if you're wondering what dust extractor I'm using, it's from Melody Susie. There's a link down below. Um, not to the dust extractor, but to Melody Susie's website. And I may have a discount code. I can't recall. But check down in the description bar um look and see i believe my discount code might be tabitha um but again check the check it check their website i like this dust extractor and i've been liking it better than my valentino that i had you guys may have noticed it's been in a lot of videos i've been using it for a while i actually really like it so definitely check it out so i use a cross cut bit to make sure i got nice and tight in the cuticle area and then i'm using this buffy bit to Again, from earlier, I clipped that dead skin towards the cuticle area from the epinicium. And I just want to buff that out and smooth that out. And so I dust the nails off, clean them all up. And here we are. I am using the Crystal Ninja glue. I think it's a super flex glue. And I am using these bling chains that are so cute i think it comes in a 12 pack it's from daily charm dailycharm.com the link is down below um the discount code is tabitha and the number 10 t-a-b-y-t-h-a-1-0 tabitha 10 so again it's going to be down in the description bar these chains come in a pack of i believe 12 12 different colors and I'm just using that glue. I dabbed it. You don't want to use too much of that glue because if you use too much, it can, one, take a long time to dry and one, not last as well. It's, it's weird. It'll have an adverse effect. Barely tap any on there. You want a marginal amount compared to the crystal. It doesn't seem right, but trust me. So I first size this up to the nail, how I want it to be, and then I just take it and twist it to break it where I want it in between two different crystals it's real simple I didn't need pliers or scissors or nothing like that you just kind of twist it and it pops so I just dab that glue on and then I'm placing this where I want it and this chain is also pretty cool um you're like oh what if it's too sh what if it's not exact because there's pretty big crystals it kind of retracts it has like this chain that all the individual um prong crystals they slide up and down on it so you can kind of set it where you want it and slide those up and down to kind of extend the space and the gaps and really refine like those small areas some more because you know like oh what if it's like a half of a half a millimeter too short because i had to you know the nail isn't I didn't shape the nails, the length to fit these exactly. But like I said, you see me, I can slide it up and down. I can bring the crystals closer to each other and separate them further from each other. And so I'm just getting this where I want it, moving those crystals, those individual crystals, how I want it, making sure they're as straight as possible. And I'm going to let those dry. Now, as far as I said this earlier, I never dove into the 
literal like color aesthetic and how why I chose to do what I did. Um, and I practiced this and I had little rough drafts and I considered this. And again, this was really something that was very much thought out. I really, really wanted to do this set. And it, I wanted it to be impactful and I wanted it to be meaningful, look simple, but have, you know, still a wow factor. The things that I had to take into consideration were the contrast of from the French to the solid bling side. Um, and I tried it different ways and I just, you know, I tried like one side black. I kind of thought that may be too much. I tried with the French black um, and the other side, I tried with that black. I didn't really, really like it because it wasn't as dramatic as I wanted it to be. And with the half French black, it didn't, I mean, not that it was ugly. It wasn't, it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do in my head. Again, try it if you want to tag me in it. I'd love to see it. Like I said, I'm sure it won't be ugly. But at the end of the day, I went just kind of traditional silver and gold. And um, I'm sorry if you hear that scratching sound. I have a shirt on that's like kind of thick with the logo. So I apologize. And so, yeah, like I said, went traditional like silver and gold to have that contrast. But it also be complimentary because the silver with my air quotes is crystal AB. As you can see, I'm doing on the French side. And I wanted to keep the crystals small because I wanted it to look very full. So the biggest size I'm using is size 7. Um, but I'm filling in with size 7, size 5, and size 3. I think I might have some 6s in here too. I'm not sure. But as you can see, I'm filling it as tight as I can, as close together. I'm kind of doing like a brick pattern where I fill in every other gap with a crystal. You know what I'm saying? So it'll line up and fit as tight together as possible. And anywhere it doesn't fit, like I said earlier, we have that um, bling, that coordinating bling color, which is that holographic butter bling from my elegance, that hollow one. And um, like I said, when you're doing something like this, no matter what the shape, this just so happens to be French. Like I said, in my example earlier, if it's a heart shape or something like that, you don't want these crystals to um, to pass the, the threshold of the perimeter of the design that you drew. That's very, very, very important. You want to very much contain them within it because... I'm working with a straight concave line design. I know straight and concave kind of seem like they don't belong, but it's a, the line itself is straight. It's not curvy. It doesn't have heels, valleys, indentations, whatever word you want to use. It's a straight line that's concave. The crystals are opposing they're convex so that means if it breaches the actual line that we drew it's going to disturb the whole illusion of what's going on so keep those crystals contained i'm really re reiterating this because i want you guys to take the principles that you see in this video and apply them you can make so many cool looks more so than this beyond this so Yes, to pull out your notepad, save this video, you know, it's good tips and tricks. So for this side, it was important again for me to have that gold, but I wanted it to be like a kind of gaudy, but still really read gold. But um, to me, when I think of like gaudy and gold, I think of like royalty, like crowns and think of like those rich like jewel tone type colors so I wanted to get like sapphire I cut short of doing red so I did that dark fuchsia so it doesn't that one that I put it's not really ruby or anything like that but kind of those colors 
Um, I didn't go like straight dark emerald. I went more of that azul. I think it's blue azul in the um in the Swarovski crystals. And what else did I do? I did light silk. I did golden shadow. There's aurum. There's fuchsia. There's um, that might be light turquoise. I might have said blue azul. I think it's light turquoise. There's, I believe it's sapphire. It's majestic blue. One or the other. And there is light silk shimmer. So there's quite a few different colors going on in this little mix. And I put down a crystal gel glue. You can use one from Daily Charm. Um, I forget what it's called. Or whatever your crystal gel glue, your favorite one is. The reason I did this, I used glue on one side on the crystal AB part because I knew exactly how I needed to lay those out, how they needed to fit, where they needed to go. I just knew that, felt comfortable with that. With this side, I needed that. I needed to have that space to kind of play around and move because I, I knew that I wanted to have all these different colors, these different crystals. They were going to be different sizes. I needed to ensure that they looked good, not only in size, but in color. I wanted to make sure they were distributed nicely, that I put a pink where I needed to, a blue where I needed to, and so on and so forth. I didn't really have an exact pattern in my head laid out. You know, of course, you don't want exact pattern. And so I needed that playtime without having that glue. And I'm also filling in some of the spaces with gold micro beads. The gold micro beads are also from Daily Charm. You can use code TAP10 over and over again. I keep telling you guys. And um, you can shop through the link down below as well. And I'm just filling that in just randomly different spaces just to give it a really full, gold, rich, royal, gaudy look. That's what we're going for on this side of the nail. Opulence, bling, royalty. That's what we want to look like. Just extra. We got money on this side and we're kind of keeping it classy and posh on the other side with the solid crystal AB. That's what's happening here. So I'm just moving these where I want them, making sure they're all in. Again, these are square nails. They're on the edge of, we don't want to have them bulky. I'm using my LED flashlight just to flash cure because once I got it where I wanted it, I didn't want it to move, flash cure. And so I'm just repeating this for every nail. I'm just speed through this. I don't know how many times you need to see that. Um, and then the chains, as you can tell, are different colors. The different colors of the chains, I made sure they all coordinated with the actual crystals that I had. So that was another consideration, too, was which color um, crystals that I have that match the Daily Charm crystal chains, which ones look good with this look, which it was all, it took a long time for me to even plan this set out. And it may not think, it may not seem like it, but it really does to do something like this and just make it look visually appealing. It takes time, you know? <laughs> so I'm, I applied a Young Nails Protein Bond on the other side just to make sure we had great adhesion of what was going to be happening. I took that crystal gel and I piled it up on the other side of that crystal chain because I want to make sure it was sealed in that we didn't have this kind of, you want to kind of have like a ramp. Like you want to make it flush with the actual nail, the ideal pink that we have built up. And you want to just fill that in. Right now I'm filling in, I'm using in this pen. There's one similar on Daily Charm again. And I'm just filling in the spaces in between my crystals. You never top coat over your crystals. Don't make me scream. Do not top coat over your crystals. Top coat around them, seal around them, seal around the edges. Never over your crystals. What did you learn? Type it below. Do not top coat over your crystals. You'll take away the bling. It'll be, it won't be even, there'll be no purpose in them. So I am using that crystal gel. Like I said, you see, I applied what seemed to be an excessive amount. And I just, again, 
you want to, and I'm taking that brush and going around that back edge to make sure that that crystal, the back of that chain is really sealed in. And it really, like I said, creates like a ramp up and smooths it out so you don't have this sharp, sudden, flat surface. And then this 90 degree angle where that um, chain starts, you don't want that harsh angle. You want it to just slowly flow up. The way we have to do that is by using that crystal gel. And then I went ahead and top coated with a no wipe top coat. And this is our final look, you guys. And just take it, take this in. This was done with so much love and consideration. It just looks like extra gaudy bling. And it is, but it's not just that. It was time and consideration and everything put together is for this client's birthday she absolutely loved them i absolutely love them i would love for you guys to recreate them if you're a nail tech please charge accordingly for them this was it's costly it's time consuming so i believe uh i believe i charge i posted it somewhere in the nail group i don't even want to lie but i think it was about three 70 400 i'm not sure for this set if you want to know if you want to know and that was a discount because i do discount a lot of my client service services that i do record so if you want to get dive into my business i'm just letting you guys know so that was very much discounted as if i wasn't recording if i wasn't recording it would have been more but i wanted to record this for you guys so i do provide a discount but i still needed to charge for my time in the Swarovski use. So look how beautiful. I just love this. Oh man, I love it. I really want to thank you guys for watching. Give a thumbs up and subscribe. Ring the bell if you learned anything. If you Even if you didn't, there's potential that maybe you will. And I appreciate you guys. I just recently hit 200,000 subscribers. Oh my goodness, it is amazing. I appreciate you guys. I could have never imagined when I recorded my first video just on a whim that it would turn into this I wasn't like this wasn't my goal but I appreciate it and I appreciate you guys so thank you guys bye